With The Dial of Destiny, the presumably last Indiana Jones movie slated for release in June, I thought it would be interesting to have a look at some of the video games that feature our favorite adventurer. After the massive success of LEGO Star Wars, it was only a matter of time until Traveler's Tales would take on other franchises. LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures was released in 2008, with LEGO Batman coming out later that year. I played this game and especially its sequel a lot with my younger brother back in the day. However, while making this review I was surprised by how little I remembered about the game. So then, grab your whips and your fedoras, because we are going on adventures. Original adventures to be exact. LEGO Indiana Jones covers the original indie trilogy, Raiders of the Last Ark, Temple of Doom and The Last Crusade. Of course there's nothing wrong with this at first, as we are talking about some of the greatest action adventure movies ever made. However, LEGO Indiana Jones was released in June 2008, while Kingdom of the Crystal Skull came out only a couple of weeks earlier. Kingdom doesn't appear in this game, but was included in LEGO Indiana Jones 2, which in turn came out in 2009. To me this just looks like an attempt to cash in twice, and as you can probably guess, I don't like it a single bit. Anyway, let's go back to the actual game. We start off with the first scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark in South America. After completing that level, we are free to start the movies in any order. Of course, you should have seen the movies before playing this game, even more so than with LEGO Star Wars. Not just because you would miss out on a lot of jokes, but also because you will have a way easier time with the puzzles. For example, in the final level of The Last Crusade, Indy has to walk over invisible bridges. If you haven't seen the movies, you would either never think of that in the first place or suspect it's a bug. Each of the movies consists of 6 levels that are usually around 40 minutes long. Of course this means the movies average out at a length of 2 hours and I needed pretty much exactly 6 hours to beat the game. And that's really not a bad length if you ask me. In fact I think the game could have been a little shorter. The core gameplay of these LEGO titles is pretty self explanatory, but if you are not familiar with them I recommend watching my review of the complete saga. In this review I mainly want to focus on the things that set India apart from Star Wars. Let's talk about the way the puzzles are designed, because that's one of the things that make the game feel a little bit longer than it needs to be. Oftentimes you will have to find spare parts that you need to fix a vehicle or motor. These parts then need to be placed on a green plate. In the first level of Temple of Doom for example you have to fix a car and then do the same thing with a plane, which feels unnecessarily repetitive. Being the main character we always have Indiana Jones in our group. He can swing from platform to platform using his whip and pull items to him. However, the game doesn't always communicate clearly when we should do this. Another example from Temple of Doom. Oftentimes you will run across monkeys that carry an item that you need to advance in the level. You have to throw a banana at them to receive the item. This is also the case in the second mission of Temple, however the bananas are located above mud which kills you when you come near it. Earlier in the level you need to use elephants to go across mud and the friendly animals are also able to pick up items. As a result I thought that's what I needed to do with the bananas, but no Indie's whip is the solution. You just need to make sure that you stand in the absolutely perfect spot which is not in any way shape or form indicated by the game. This was one of the two times I had to look up the solution to a puzzle on the internet. The other instance also just so happened to be in Temple of Doom, but it would take me too long to explain it. Overall the puzzles are significantly harder than in the complete saga, which makes total sense as we are quite literally playing an archaeologist, but I feel like there has to be some sort of middle ground here. What I'm trying to say is this, it really wouldn't hurt if LEGO Indiana Jones gave us more hints now and then, especially considering this game is aimed at children. And if you haven't noticed already, I have problems with Temple of Doom. I consider it the weakest of the original three movies anyway, and it's especially underwhelming in this game. Raiders of the Last Ark and The Last Crusade are significantly better, though The Last Crusade suffers from atrociously bad controls in its vehicle sections. At least if you are using a keyboard like I did, it probably works a lot better with a controller. The game features several character classes. 
Small characters can crawl through hatches to get to new areas. Characters with books can decipher glyphs. Women can jump higher than men, presumably because they are lighter. As a strength athlete, I can tell you that's not how the force works. By the way, a couple of colorful little flowers on the floor indicate where you have to jump with the female characters. Because women like flowers, get it? But I digress, it's not like LEGO games are supposed to be realistic anyway. Combat works just like you would expect if you've played LEGO Star Wars. The only thing I hated was that bazookas kill you instantly, even if you have 4 hearts. Most of the enemies are one hit kills, but you will trigger a nice little animation occasionally. Of course, you don't just end the lives of many little minifigures when playing LEGO Indie, you also collect treasures. There are 10 of them per level and they work just like the minikits in LEGO Star Wars. You can also achieve two adventurer status if you've collected a certain amount of studs. Once you've completed a level in story mode, you unlock free play, which is where you can pick any character you want to solve all of the puzzles. You can buy new characters in Baronet College, which is where you return to between missions. You can also view cutscenes and customize your own characters, just like in the Mos Eisley Cantina. In terms of graphics, the game is definitely starting to show its age, but it doesn't look horrible. Except for the female characters which are incredibly generic and don't resemble their movie counterparts at all. The male characters are fine for the most part. Indy is spot on, but I'm not sure what to think of Sala. Exploring the many different levels is especially fun because the legendary Indiana Jones soundtrack composed by John Williams is playing in the background. I would be willing to wait in the main menu for hours on end and just listen to the Raiders march. Being the follow up to LEGO Star Wars, LEGO Indiana Jones is of course similar in a number of ways. Both games are entertaining action adventures that come in handy when you need something to play with your friends, siblings or children, especially if you are a fan of the franchise. However, I definitely had more fun with Star Wars than with Indy. There's a bit more filler in this game despite having less content overall, and I thought the puzzles were designed in a more questionable way as well. Overall I'm going to give LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures a 6.5 out of 10, and I do feel like I'm being a bit generous here. Raiders and The Last Crusade are definitely fun, but I feel like Temple of Doom drags the game down. I would say its current price of 17 euros is pushing it a bit. But if you can get LEGO Indy in a sale, you will be in for a couple of hours of solid entertainment.